that. Three years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can crazy. you imagine that? <laughs> it's wild. Man. I am so excited today to talk to Ryan Neal. How are you? Great, man. How, ex are... how exciting is this? Dude, so exciting. We are legitimate, <laughs> like, brothers from another mother. I know. Right. We could be, you know, the Neals, you know, who knows? I mean, I always said never trust a guy with two first names, but <laughs> Ryan exactly. Neal and Dave Neal, yeah. the duo nobody asked for. Exactly. So we met you on Listen to Your Heart, the Correct. Bachelor spinoff music dating show from mm -hmm. 2021 that I think... 2020. Have, 2020, oh my gosh. So it premiered right before the pandemic? Right after. Uh, first episode was April 13th, 2020. Okay, so, so... about a month after the pandemic started. And what a, what a bummer that the show <laughs> that people go on to try to get some social media love happens yeah. during the greatest lockdown of our lifetimes. Exactly. In in some ways, it was like, oh man, everyone's going to be at home watching, but at the same time, there's this catastrophic event going on where that is the least of people's concerns is another Bachelor spinoff. So it was good and it was, it was bad in other ways. So you have to compete with music, but also pair up and try to find love. What, how do they pitch this to you? Do they tell you it's a Bachelor show? They did not. Um, initially, it was pitched to me so a random dude reached out on Instagram just on one of my video singing posts and was like, hey, we have a show coming up. We think you'd be great for. Um, and I was like, there's no way. This <laughs> yeah, you're like, now. okay, murder me now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, a couple of days went by. I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm going to type in this guy's name on IMDb, see if it comes up. And sure enough, tons of Bachelor shows. Uh, I'm like, all right. So I, I followed up with them. And essentially, they were like, are you single? Um, you're clearly a musician. Uh, would you be down to live in a house with other musicians, men and women, and make music together? I'm like, sounds fantastic. Like, let's let's do it. <laughs> and so that's how it was initially pitched. So that was was this the summer before? You know, this what was, was the turnover like for that? This was like early fall. I want to say like early September. So maybe yeah, late summer 2019. I got the the little DM, and then. Uh, the initial round of casting for me, the closest city was Chicago because I was still in Detroit at the time. So went to Chicago, did a full like casting couch experience in the smallest hotel room of all time. And, and next thing you know, midway through the interview, they're like, do you want to come out to LA for the finals? I'm like, all right, is that easy? So Did they ask you to perform? They did, yeah. I, I, I sang a couple songs, um, just a big light facing a couch with a, a man and woman in there just asking me questions for about an hour. And, and that was it. And next thing you know, about a month and a half later, around Halloween time, was the final audition in LA. And that was a whole... Oh, that's I mean, amazing. Well, you know what's funny? I heard for like America's Got Talent, when you're a, a comedian, you have to audition for like two people and tell jokes. And it's like, what world? Like, you can't help but feel bad leaving there. Because you're like, did that go well? Right. Like, what was that? Yeah. How did you feel at, in that in that moment? Were you like, I got this? Or I mean, I, I honestly... I did feel pretty good leaving <laughs> because it was like within 15 minutes, so like, so do you want to come out to LA? I'm like, it was that easy? I, I was expecting like hundreds of people at the at the hotel lobby and all this stuff. And I don't know how many people they had in Chicago at the time, but I didn't see another person. And it was just like a couple of producers and myself. Um, but that's but the I, I did get a really good feeling. That's the beauty of Instagram, right? Where they can kind of suss people out. Like, it's not, they don't need a cattle call. They're like, all right, we saw what you look like. You're a good looking guy. You can sing. And w what's the term they have? White guys with guitar. Have you heard this term online? WGWG. No. I, I saw that. I was like, what the hell does this mean? I Googled it. And it's like a whole thing. And you come to Nashville and there's a bunch of white guys with guitar. Oh, yeah. Play yeah. piano, <laughs> singer, songwriter. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, I mean, not everybody who made it onto the show got much screen time. You had to pair up. You had to find a partner. What was that process like? Because it is artificial in a way. I mean, it's like an artificial in the sense that oh, you're being put in this situation more so than The Bachelor, where that's a dating theme show. This is dating, but also music. So are you are you trying to mesh with people musically or just like going off of sheer attraction? Yeah, it, it was it was funny because, you know, I, I went on the show and if anyone tells you different, they'd be lying just to like, you know, showcase myself, but I'm also open to the potential of meeting someone. Um, so initially I got hooked up pretty well. I was the first guy in the house, you know, second person that anyone really saw. And so initially myself and Jamie were, we had like a good hour to ourselves before anyone else came in the house. So initially, you know, the attraction was there, which is really cool. Um, but then as, as people started filtering in, you know, other stuff started happening throughout the night. She went with someone else and then 
you know, next thing you know, the, the story unfolds a different way. And you end up with, is it Natasha? <laughs> Natasha, yes. And she had, like, dated, she was, like, kind of dated pop royalty, right? Wasn't she, like, didn't she date, like, uh, Enrique Iglesias or someone? <laughs> I don't know about that. No? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> maybe she didn't tell me. Um, oh, I don't know. I Google everybody. Maybe. So. <laughs> I'm maybe. just like, well, wow. I mean, she's got a great voice. So you oh, guys incredible. became known as the, 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 the couple that would really make the music your own. Um, what was that collaboration? collaboration like yeah we you know we were going for it we we didn't want to just go up there and and take the songs we were given and just sing a cover song the way it was you know that's that's cool and all but we were like man we want to put on a show and she comes from this background like you said the pop world of put on this like big shows all around the world and and myself being like a uh, more music producer and, and into the weeds musically i want to make it more unique so um we really strive to put on the best show possible and not just sing a song on stage yeah no you guys i mean I, honestly i think the show is critically acclaimed most people here's the problem with the bachelor and i was explaining this i did caitlin bristow's podcast right, yesterday yeah. and she was a fan of of um of listen to your heart but i think most of bachelor nation or at least a segment of them they just want love and drama and they don't necessarily respect music or understand the process of like making it yes and so yeah like you said any opportunity is good if you find the love of your life great but if you'd sell 10 extra tickets to a show good too i mean exactly brick is is part of the wall yeah that you gotta build yeah and and i don't you know i don't feel bad saying that that there's you know were you on there for the the right reasons it's like everything's a right you know if, as long it's a as false you go dichotomy in, there is no right reason there is how can i help myself get to where i need to go it's just yeah if you have good <laughs> intentions and you're being you know pure and, and nice to the people in front of you like what what can you have to lose and i was very uh guarded at the time because I knew that anything you can say can be used against you in multitude of ways. So I did not give the producers anything in their interviews. I was very boring strategically because some people said some stuff on the show. I'm like, dude, why would you, why would you say that? Even if it was unrelated to what they were asking you, like they can spin that however they want. So. Yeah. And there was some drama. Matt and Rudy still make news. They were <laughs> yeah. a great couple of musicians but clearly had you know i don't know it's, it's it's funny because when one when one person in the couple i feel like is an artist it can be ugly when both are artists it's like oh boy this is gonna be emotional <laughs> yeah for sure for so sure. Uh, so what's the dating life like now um you know I'm, I'm dating it's not it's not really at the at the top of my priority at the moment you know i'm, I'm still very focused on on music and stuff but at the same time it's like would be nice to, to find someone to just just do fun things around town with. So, um, you and know. you moved to you moved from Detroit to Nashville, which is where we are right now. Correct. So, yep. what's the what's the scene? What's the difference? Because I mean, here it's crazy, right? And you have to you know you have to like you, when you when you walk down the what's it called Music Row, you just see a hundred different bands playing at all times. I was there at noon on a Tuesday. On Broadway down there? Yeah. Yeah, it's and, wild. And it was just like, oh my gosh, everyone's good and everyone's got their own thing that they're doing. This person's not let me in. Yeah. Guy, I'm running a TV show here. Let me <laughs> <Yeah>. in. <laughs> um, so what's, what's it like uh, creatively living in Nashville? Um, you know, it's a great space because everything's very condensed here. As, as you can tell, I mean, you can get around the entire city in 15 minutes. And so there's a lot of people just kind of crammed in together super talented in, in many facets um and it's there's a collaborative spirit here it's not i mean it's very competitive but also at the same time there's a lot of co co-writing is huge in nashville you pair up with one two three four people write a song together and then that becomes like your baby that you want to promote to the world so it's a, it's a team effort and um, that's helping me step outside of my comfort zone because i'm a very like just be in the studio myself, make everything myself, play all the instruments, like do all it solo, which is good because it, it honed my skills. But, um, you know, working with other people is just so much fun. Yeah, so. I, I really enjoyed during the pandemic checking out your Instagram lives where you're just kind of cranking it, having late night jam <laughs> sessions. I feel like every every comedian I know appreciates music because it's like what we don't do. It's kind of like athletes love rock stars, rock stars love athletes. You just like you respect the thing you don't do because you're like, oh, that's some real talent right there. And dude, I... I hardly listen to music anymore. I solely 
like stand-up comedy is my oh really thing. <laughs> I, I don't do it but I, I respect it more than any other art form well it's always funny when you go to like a concert and the musician the lead guy is just trying to crack jokes yeah yeah no. you know, it's like that one <laughs> no, moment it's like yeah you just want the, you want the thing you don't have yeah. well trust me you're not missing much out there in the stand-up <laughs> world but it is similar in that it's like just this gig I mean stand-up comedians are like lone wolves yes. because you're just out there on your own doing your own thing where you see a lot of comics like when I did shows Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday I saw the same comics at every place and by the third night I was like I knew people's names and For I'm sure. just like I'm visiting Nashville I didn't know I would meet anybody here Yeah. Uh, but so I totally can relate to to like searching for that camaraderie because it does it can get a little crazy if you're just at home by yourself doing your thing oh, you're like what am I doing is this good like how do you get that feedback you exactly know? and and stand up comedy is the only art form where you you need a crowd where musically you can create on your own and kind of know if a thing's you know good or not but stand up I mean, you need that feedback to know yeah, so, if people are going to laugh. So how does it, your intuition work with, like, again, I'm really bad with terms, but, like, if you think of a good hook or something, like, how do you know this is good? Like, do you just trust in yourself over time? I think so, yeah, that. And if I if I make something and I don't get... Because, you know, you're working on a song for 40 to 80 hours. It's like, it's a, it's a full-time commitment. And you listen to it over and over, hundreds, thousands of times. And... If after all that time, I can still listen to it and be like, oh, this is still like catchy and it puts a smile on my face, then I know I have something. If I get sick of it fast and I'm like, don't even waste your time on this, just keep going. Interesting. Because a lot of times with stand-up, I have so much self-doubt, I have to almost wait for it. Like if I tell someone a story and they laugh, I'll be like, oh, maybe that's something. Like, yeah. we, I'm, you know, I feel like a lot of comics are so unaware yeah, of the right. thing that makes them unique. Can I park mm-hmm. in the lot here? You or? can. If there's or any it, space. I back up right if here. not, yeah, you should be good there. All right, great. So we are going to get some coffee and then finish this off. But when you, you talked about your babies and, and creatively kind of, um, you know, producing content, uh, you know, I was just randomly on this trip to Nashville, reached out to you, didn't know you were in town, and you said you've got a song that's dropping today, the day that this comes Correct. out. Correct. Yeah, it's called Wonder Woman. Um, it's my first single, like, solo single in, in a while, so I'm, I'm very, very excited for it, very proud of it, and um, yeah, it drops today, June 9th. So how about we get coffee and then maybe get a sneak peek? Let's do it. All right, coffee. Cool, Let's go. We did it. Look at that coffee. Oh, yeah. boy. Cheers to you. Prime. Thank you so much. Thank he you, wouldn't man. let me pay. <laughs> uh, my younger brother over here. Um, so what, this is a cold foam with orange, a hint of orange in it. I'm melted. <laughs> I am just loving this. Okay, so you're dropping a new song today. Tell me about Correct. the process of the song, what it means to you, and all that before we play it. <clears throat> so this song came about, I spent my birthday this past year, which is in March, um, secluded by myself in a cabin. Uh, about an hour and a half east of town and that's kind of like how I like to create by myself alone and especially in a, in a woodsy kind of nice environment like that so you know was getting uh, I'd say quite weird every day out there <laughs> and just 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 vibing and I came up with this chord progression and then I laid this like saxophone a uh, little sample I put together over it, and All right, it well just... slow me down right here chord progression so that's just the is that the melody? What does chord progression mean? For chord progress? Yeah, exactly. So the, the chords of a song is like the the musical bed, like the the chords that go together. So then, so so you just you just fiddle with with the chords until there's something you like, and then you kind of go from exactly, there. and then you kind of like loop it. Like in my program, it'll just like keep playing the same thing over and over, and I'll just like walk around the room trying to figure out a melody, um, and then slowly build the track from there. Add drums, bass, guitar, piano, what have you. And um, just like a beautiful few days out there, and then eventually the, the song came about, and um, it drops today, June 9th, and it's called Wonder Woman. Great. And we get a sneak peek here? Yes. And where can people uh, buy the song or stream it? Or- Everywhere that music's released, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, all that jazz. And follow you on Instagram? Yes. And we'll at, have... Yep. Go for sure, it. You'll put the at, uh, at Ryan Neal, R-Y-A-N-N-E-A-L underscore music. Amazing. All right. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. So this is Wonder Woman coming out today. If it plays. I used to know her. 
We met in Nola. She read me all the wrong rights. Take your time, look into my eyes, and you'll see the moonlight. She said, I've been known to break a heart for two. Yes, and I've been known to run around like two. I hate it when I do it, but I love when I get through it. I'll see you again soon. I've been, I've been spending all my money, all my time. Working through the daylight. I'm missing you all through the night. She leave me in my way too fucking easy. Yeah, it's always on my mind. Yeah. Oh, this is a this unbox. So yeah. Good man. Thanks, man. That's great. Thank you. Oh, you're gonna have a lot of people loving this. <laughs> I hope so, man. I, I worked pretty hard on it. That's so. great. Congrats on that, yeah. man. That's so great. And Thank now, you. so we'll we'll definitely get our army of people to go support you for sure. Cool. So, what's the process of getting the song, <sighs> the love it needs online? You know, it used to be Money. people would. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, just like whatever. So yeah, I mean, it's like, do you have to have a PR person? I mean, in Nashville, there must be whole industries of people promising you they'll get your songs played. Yeah, exactly, and, and it costs a lot of money to do so. And, you know, unfortunately, like, I'm not by any means wealthy. And, like, I'm, you know, a very much working musician. And so for me, it's, you know, the social media content, as you know, telling your friends and family and everyone else to support it, like you do with your comedy. It's like, you know, I'm not a trust fund kid. I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to just, like, randomly spend well you know not you know good good <laughs> songs don't always come from trust funds true they come from you know slinging slinging the instruments around town and packing things out and exactly that real hustling i hate to say it because i i always preach like that like creativity doesn't have to be hard like like the whole idea of a starving artist i hate that projection onto people right but there is a depth you go to when all when the only faith that w- w- there's a depth that you go to when you're the only person that believes in yourself for sure to an extent yes yes and there is like I you know internally very confident in what I can do but um, at the same time it does require a team effort a, a community of you know to believe in you and to really support it because there's so much music out there there's so much content it just it's overwhelming and, and I've, I've heard too this idea that you know as, as nice as people are you know, truly, a lot of people just can't fathom, you know, your success until it happens. And then you get the phone, you know, if you have a song go, that goes super viral, you get the phone calls from friends you haven't heard from in years. And that's just kind of the way it can become where where there is this journey that you're on that no one can help you other than you and your creative process and, and, and just, just putting the work in. Exactly. Yeah. And I think the, the, you know, the work will speak for itself if it's good enough. And then that extra step of, you know, getting out there performing and, and pushing it to the masses because myself, I am, I'm not a great self promoter. I I feel very icky doing a lot of things that that is required in the business to, to kind of get yourself out there. So that is not my strong suit. If I had like a manager or someone to really do that for me, that's kind of ideal. But at this time it's kind of just me and and my yeah, followers. <laughs> you know, and some people can get real creative and, you know, you just never know what's going to hit. But when, mm-hmm. you know, it's re- it's really beautiful in today's world that one thing can hit online and just resonate with the right person. And then, I mean, have you had have you had any of those experiences where, you know, because there's, if you can explain this to me, iHeartRadio like owns all the radio stations now, right? Like they bought a lot of them. I so, believe so. And now they're headquarters here. They're, they're headquartered here. Oh, really? I believe so. Yeah. Um, so, because it used to be, I feel like there's a lot more independent stations. You could like show up and have someone believe in you, and they'll play your track. Like, do is it? Do you even like submit for tr- like your track to radio stations, or is it about trying to like climb the Spotify charts? Yeah, you can't. I mean, from my understanding, everything I've read and researched, you can't just like hit up as an unknown artist, hit up like a big radio station, and be like, hey, I got a great song. Like, if you don't have the numbers for them to be like, oh yeah, this this guy's doing it then it doesn't really make sense. You can hit up local independent radio stations, and if you get enough spins there, maybe that'll get some traction online, what have you, but um, it's just, it's so different now. You don't know if a a viral TikToker is gonna make your song the biggest thing ever. I mean, that's a very real thing these uh, days. Old Town Road, is that what it's called? That, yes. Or, it was a old country, whatever. That mm-hmm. was a um, that was like that went huge on TikTok first. 
I think yeah, I think so or something. I mean, that was a while ago. And so. then you have people like Jax, who she, do you know her? She, I do. She's big on TikTok, but that she became like her Victoria's Secret song became, you know, almost like a household radio song or whatever. Um, so yeah, it is. I mean, so it is interesting as an outsider. You do see the people that that get that love, but you can't like hack it it just has to be something that hits at the right time the right people comment on it and give you that endorsement it seems yeah i think you know the 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 product obviously has to be there it has to be good um because there's so much good music that's just never heard by the masses um and whether that's fate or what have you but yeah it just takes that probably one person a group of people to really put it on and then you never know what can happen from there so how do you keep the faith because we have a lot of creative people in our community. How do you keep the faith when you don't get that maybe love right away? And, and also, how did it feel coming off The Bachelor with with a little bit of a newfound audience? Oh man, that was a that was a trip in itself. I mean, it, I tell people I don't know many things that can literally overnight put you into the eyes of so many people. I mean, I went from having six hundred followers to the next morning it was like twenty five thousand <laughs> in like hours. And I couldn't, I mean, I had a very tough time in those months after the show ended handling it. It was so much newfound anxiety that I didn't know I had. Um, Put me into kind of a depressive state for a while. Just because of commenters and things like that? No, I mean, I got it pretty good. Like, I I had a very good run on the show. I think people generally liked what we did and, and things like that. But I felt the need to keep up at this insane speed that I really didn't have to. I feel like I had to respond to everyone's comments thank you thank you thank you all this stuff and I felt like I had to be this person that they saw on TV which really like was a fraction of who I really am I mean I wasn't 100% myself on on the show yeah I mean Um, but I understand like you said about being guarded because in the end it's like you just want to control the things you can control and you can't control the music industry but you can control not you know having petty drama on a dating reality show where it's never been done for before sure. you didn't know for sure yeah I mean, you did get edited very nicely like you did get a lot of you probably got i mean i would say top four or five as far as screen time goes i mean you guys yeah, did really easily. really well yeah and i knew i i kind of knew i got hooked up off the bat because in the you know you stay in this hotel room for like a week before you go on set and i ended up talking unbeknownst to other people on the show, to the executive producer on the show. He was just one of the people that came in and interviewed me, and we hit it off immediately. He was from Buffalo. I'm from Detroit. It was a very, like, Rust Belt oh, connection. There you, go. <laughs> you know, and, and they're like, you talked to Bennett? Like, I was like, yeah, we had a great conversation. They're like, no one else talked to Bennett. I'm like, what? <laughs> and so the next thing you know, I'm, I'm driving up to the house, and they're like, is number two ready? I'm like, am I going to be, like, the first, one of the first people on the set? So I had a good... Dude, that's really how, but that's how it works. Like, Lauren Michaels, who created SNL, mm-hmm. if he likes you and has a good vibe with you, you know, obviously talent-wise and all that, you're you're good. Yeah. And it's actually funny you brought up that story because I was at Zany's Monday Night Comedy mm-hmm. Club. I don't know anybody. It's, like, first day of school. I'm in the green room. There's a bunch of comics. And I'm talking to some this lady. She was nice. And I'm just ranting and raving and just talking, like, just being authentic, not doing anything to brag or to promote myself or whatever, having a great conversation. And I go, hey, I was like, I didn't get your name. What's your name? And she goes, Lucy. And I was like, oh, yeah, the booker's name is Lucy. I was like, are you, hey, yeah, are yeah. you the booker? And she goes, yeah. And I was like, there you wow, go. I'm so glad I just wasn't talking mad shit. Right, right. I was very complimentary because they run the club very well. But I was like, oh, that was so nice to have a refreshing conversation. And it turns out. She's completely organic. You had no idea. Because yeah. all she gets is every comic treating her differently. And I don't blame them. It's like these people are gatekeepers that hold so, so much value. Exactly. And it's like so hard to just be like oh yeah I'll be nonchalant about my life you know yeah yeah and we end up like talking where we're inserting you know uh, uh, our own resumes and it's just like <laughs> ugh you know you just get these Hollywood speech so that's really yeah. cool that you were able to just shoot the shit and they were like that was the guy you know? right yeah oh, I had okay. no idea I was like there's a guy glasses and a hat like super cool guy really down to earth my favorite person out of all the producers to talk to and he ended up being like the top guy so did you was there a side of you that thought you didn't get enough from the show because the show didn't mm. I mean ratings wise I don't really know how it did but it, it's not the main show you know the only the only part that that sucked was not being able to go out and play show literally the world was shut down for months and months so you know after that huge wave of eyes on you and and just instant um you know mini fame for two or three months it was like 
it died off so quick and then the next season's on and people just completely forget about you they stop following you i lost like forty thousand followers like it's uh, crazy no like, way. people just don't give a fuck anymore. why do they unfollow it's a free thing that's i don't know man it is it, but it you know if it was just me i'd be like oh i did i must have done something wrong but i, I looked at all my other buddies accounts and it was like the same thing like, yeah you know it's funny like i'll if, if i don't post something for a while and then i post something i'll lose followers <laughs> oh like, yeah because you're just reminding people that don't like you to be like oh yeah get rid of that guy yeah exactly yeah uh, but you know in the end that's what's so superficial about social media you are better off having an army of a thousand people like if you had hundred percent one thousand people that bought your song oh that's what you need i'll and take it over a hundred thousand fake yeah absolutely all day um well we've made it back to the hotel um yes. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to ask you, but I really appreciated you sharing, you know, sort of your creative insight with me because it's it's kind of foreign to me, to be honest. Um, Dude, but, I, um, I love sharing. It was such an honor. I love stand-up comedy. I love the fact that you're, you know, you're in all these different areas and facets of the entertainment world just crushing it i'm um, just trying to take my sandbox and bring it places because that's what it that's what a podcast is it's just like having that moment where you can kind of just connect with people that are you know you know parallel doing creative things but different and i i value what musicians do so much i whenever i go to the honky tonks and see these people at 2 p.m singing and they're like e you know there's someone there they were like do you mind if we play an original song and i'm like play the original right, it's like yeah. so many people want to hear free bard and i'm like tell me what your soul is thinking exactly so exactly. i'm pleading with our audience right now yes. to give the song a shot comment share it with your friends and be a part of like the ground movement of independent music where yes. things aren't just being force fed you know the, i'm sure the music world has the same version of like um you know the comic book movies it's like that ain't it folks yes. that ain't it so <laughs> no. thanks so much Dude. for uh, for stopping by i appreciate much it love, man thank you so much this is a blast thank you to your audience you're doing a really cool thing all right well next time i'm in nashville we'll go for another spin 100 <laughs> percent, man.